Hi everyone, welcome to the Diva for Rhino video tutorials. This is Kara, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to run a simple um, image based metric. In order to run the metric, you need to have a model um, that's been set up using the location and material files. Um, you can set up the node files too, but uh, for the image based metrics, you don't actually need the nodes. If you're looking for the file that I'm using, you can go down uh, to the Diva for Rhino website and go over to the user guide here on the right side, getting started and setting up a Rhino model. And here you can see a link to the Rhino file. And you can use the instructions on the user guide or the other video tutorial to show you um, the steps of selecting the location, going through the nodes and the materials. So to go ahead and run one of the image-based metrics, we can go ahead and click on Metrics. And at the top here, we see that we have three options, Daylight Images, Daylight Grid-based, and Thermal Single Zone. Uh, and underneath that, when we have Daylight Images selected, we have uh, five different choices. The first two are simply RGB uh, visualizations of our scene. One is a single point in time, a single uh, image visualization and the second one is a time lapse so if you want to run um, over the course of the day or um, you know other uh, routines and you can do that there. The radiation map shows a false color uh, image of the incident solar radiation on surfaces in your view and the last two are glare analysis. So today we're just going to run the simple visualization and uh, it's a good metric to run uh, before you do any uh, other metrics at all because it allows you to see whether your geometry is exporting properly. It's a visual check basically um, to make sure that surface normals aren't flipped or there's um, correct materials are being, as being assigned. So I encourage you to uh, do a visualization before you proceed on to any other metrics regardless of uh, what kind of final um, analysis you want to do. So in this menu, we have several options. The first is the image quality. And you can look at the drop-down menu here. And these are basically shortcuts um, that uh, allow you, that correspond basically to the radiance parameters down here below. You can see um, that, for instance, if I have low quality selected and I look at the AB2 here, and then I switch to medium quality, the AB changes to a 3. Um, and like I said, it's just a shortcut. Um, but if you do feel comfortable changing these radiance parameters, then you can go ahead and type them in directly here. Uh, the Whatever you type in this box will actually override the image quality setting up here. So, um, But again, if you uh, don't feel comfortable, then feel free to continue to use these uh, shortcuts here. And if you made a mistake and you want to go back, just click Restore Defaults. The second option is the sky condition. You probably most often use the clear sky with sc sun and the overcast sky condition, but there are several other options here below. We're going to leave uh, this at clear sky with sun for now. The next option is the date and time, and this is in the format of month, um, day, and hour, and a 24-hour clock. So this would be September 21st at 9 a.m. If we wanted to do September 21st at uh, 3 p.m., we would just type in 15 there. For the camera type, we uh, probably leave it at perspective. Uh, 180 degree fisheye is most useful and in fact required when you're running um, a point in time analysis with eval glare. And it will, it will default to that when you select that option. You can run either just your current perspective view or your saved rhinoceros views. So uh, if you have several views saved, you can uh, run all of them all at once here. And then the last option is to generate a TIFF image along with the um, default image file, which is a .pic file. And uh, it's often helpful to click this because the .pic files are uh, really great files. They're HDR or high dynamic range images and they um, can be analyzed using uh, various image softwares um, to show luminance values and, and other helpful information. But they're not a capable of being opened by um, programs like Photoshop and other standard image viewers. So by generating a TIFF image um, 
it automatically creates a, an image that you can use uh, when you uh, uh, want to see uh, the image quickly. Uh, if you need a file format that's different than either the TIFF or the PIC, when the file does open in the WX false color or when you open it in the WX false color image software, which comes with the Diva Verino software, um, you can save the image at that time to a variety of other formats. Moving on, we discussed the radiance parameters. Next is the image size. This is just the width and height in pixels. And you have a choice of whether to open the final image in WX false color, your system default viewer, or to not open the results at all. We'll leave it at the WX false color. We want a high dynamic shading in part because we haven't actually set any up yet for this um, model, but this refers to the shading module. And lastly, the geometric density controls the mesh resolution um, as the geometry is exported. So um, if you have a model with a lots of curves or um, uh, curved surfaces, then it's important to uh, leave this at the highest value of 100. If you have planar surfaces, you can uh, reduce this down to its lowest, but um, it doesn't have a huge impact on uh, time. Uh, so we tend to leave it at 100, which is the maximum. Okay, and now we're ready to run the simulation, so we just click Run Simulation. Okay, and now our uh, image has finished running, and we can see our geometry has all exported very nicely. And if we click save image, we can now save our image, uh, as I was saying, in various image formats if we want to. Uh, there's also several options within WX False Color for um, clicking and creating labels, which give the luminance values. Um, you can also display uh, your image in false color, and there are several other uh, image display options that are available here. In case you're wondering where your image is stored, um, wherever you have your model stored, uh, Diva will automatically create a results file in that same directory. And if we open that, you can see that there are four subfolders. Um, the first is daylight grid-based simulations, which we'll be uh, reviewing in the next tutorial. Uh, the next is daylight images, and if we open that up, we can see um, this is the image that we just ran. Uh, and I ran a couple others before, so those are all stored there. We also have our simulation assumptions. In this case, this is really our material file. Um, and that's nice if you want to go back in the future. Let's say you change your material file, and then a few months later you go back to this model and you want to look at it again. Your material file is stored right there with everything else. And then thermal simulations. So that's it. That's basically how you run an image-based uh, metric in Diva. And in the next tutorial, we'll be going over how to run uh, grid-based simulations. See you at the next tutorial.